How's it going, Savage Life family? So we are going to talk about a couple of things. Some big news was launched today, and it is Elon Musk wanting to buy Twitter for $43 billion. So as you can see with this tweet, we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. Elon Musk is offering almost $9 more a share for Twitter than yesterday's closing price to buy it all. Only a fool or someone intentionally trying to limit free speech in the world would turn that down. So there's going to be pros and cons. I'm going to tell you which side that I currently back. But if you currently know what is happening with the stock market, the stock market has been down. Twitter has been higher, much higher in the past. It's reached highs of $70 and it is currently $46.79. So it could definitely go both ways. But we're going to pay close attention to this SEC filing by Elon Musk. Now he said, I invested in Twitter as I believe in its potential to be the platform for free speech around the globe. And I believe free speech is a societal imperative for a functioning democracy. However, since making my investment, I now realize that the company will neither thrive nor serve this societal imperative in its current form. Twitter needs to be transformed as a private company. As a result, I am offering to buy 100% of Twitter for $54.20 per share in cash. As you can see, its current stock is 46. So that is about nearly eight to nine dollars more per share in cash. A 54% premium over the day before I began investing in Twitter and a 38% premium over the day before my investment was publicly announced. My offer is my best and final offer. And if it is not accepted, I would need to reconsider my position as a shareholder. Twitter has extraordinary potential and I will unlock it. How will Elon Musk unlock this potential? Like he said, free speech is limited on Twitter because it is a public company. Now, the benefits of being a privately owned company is finances are kept in private, but that's not important. It is fewer governing rules. The Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, has rules referred to as principles that designate how a public company is governed. So there are plenty of things that Twitter is not able to do. So therefore, it cannot be the freest of speech platform. Now, as well, he stated, as I indicated this weekend, I believe that the company should be private to go through the changes that need to be made. After the several days of thinking over, I have decided I want to acquire the company and take it private. I am going to send you an offer letter tonight. He then goes to say that this is not a threat. It's simply not a good investment without the changes that need to be made. What changes is Elon Musk trying to make? Well, take a look at his tweets for the past couple of days. You can see maybe a payment option for Doge. Bot army is too expensive to maintain, making it sort of a place where you probably have to pay two to three dollars. And when paying those two to three dollars a month, it limits the people who don't pay the two to three dollars a month. Therefore, those people who are having millions of bots running through Twitter spamming gets completely blocked and ignored making it too expensive to maintain like he stated maybe an edit button maybe stopping the limitations of freedom of speech and stopping banning everybody for just having a simple say in a matter over twitter so ladies and gentlemen there is plenty people who are having a current meltdown over this whole proposition your ego is way bigger than your judgment and your money doesn't make you a decent leader of a damn thing you run a racist company and i will never let my words drive your bottom line i'll be doing everything i can to convince literals not to buy your things nothing will make me delete twitter faster than elon musk buying it out and then we also have this individual here if I had $43 billion, I wouldn't be trying to buy free speech. I definitely would be paying my fair share of taxes. For those of you who didn't know, Elon Musk has broke in the record of the amount of taxes that he has paid. He owes $11 billion in taxes, which most likely have already been paid off. So Elon Musk, yes, is paying his fair share of taxes. He's not avoiding it like past presidents. So where do I stand in this current situation? Now, I have my doubts with Elon Musk as a lot of us in the cryptocurrency industry ended up losing a ton of money or potential gains that we could have made in May 
after Elon Musk ended up tweeting out that energy concerning issues were derived from Bitcoin. But you can't sit here and say that Elon Musk is not a great leader because we live in a capitalistic world and Elon Musk would not be as rich as he is if he didn't offer a great product. For an example, he owns and is CEO of multiple companies, including SpaceX, privately owned company who is planning on colonizing Mars, as well as Tesla. I recently purchased a Tesla myself with my wife. And it is, I'd say, the best vehicle currently on the road. Why is that? Because of the amount of technology it offers for the price. Not to mention he was a previous founder of PayPal as well and the board company who is building underground tunnels in LA to solve the huge traffic issue that is currently ongoing. So making Twitter a privately owned company would be beneficial to freedom of speech. And I doubt that Elon Musk is one to spend this amount of money and let the company completely die out. So we'll have to see what ends up happening because if they don't accept this offer, the stock is going to completely plummet over the next couple of weeks as he sells off billions of dollars worth of his share in Twitter. So ladies and gentlemen, we have one more news that I wanted to cover and it's his Nexo. Nexo and MasterCard launching the world first crypto back payment card. Now a lot of individuals have cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum, Solana that they don't want to sell their cryptocurrency in order to use the actual fiat. So Nexo said the card available in selected European countries allows users to spend without having to sell their digital assets such as Bitcoin, which are used as collateral to back the credit granted. Of course, if you don't pay back that credit in a certain amount of time, maybe in a year, they'll go ahead and use the Bitcoin that you set as collateral to pay off that debt. But at the very least, look how much time you have. You don't have to sell Bitcoin now at $40,000 in order to use that fiat. You could just use your Bitcoin as collateral. Maybe Bitcoin jumps up to $60,000, $70,000, and then you could go ahead and take some profits off to sell back that debt that you use, hopefully in a great place. So that is all for some cryptocurrency news. If you guys enjoyed this update, be sure to smash that like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.